This is an outfeed table for our table saw, which is about eight years old. It's time to rethink this for reasons that I'll talk about later. I'm breaking this down to get down to the main components of the original build and see if we can still use them in the next design. Those components are four identical cabinet boxes that are screwed together to form the base for the 4x4 foot top. Fortunately, even though we used some glue to hold them together and secure them to the base, once the casters were removed, they came apart very easily and are still in ideal shape. The base piece should be able to be used in the next design as well. I'm thinking that if we attach only two boxes together and create a smaller footprint, that might be helpful in using floor space better. Now we have an L-shaped unit that gives us some storage possibilities as well. We can mirror the other two boxes to the first unit to give us a second unit that complements the first. Add drawers where we can and trim everything out nicely, and I think we may be set up for another eight years. I think there are real opportunities to use this approach to carts in small shops or garages to make better use of space. I say that because the majority of my construction years was spent working out of a two-car garage. One of the big issues with the first cart was that since all the shelves were open, everything stored on them was regularly covered in sawdust from using the table saw. Everything in the cart was piled on the CNC machine while we worked on this project. A vice I had built that was never as functional as I had hoped was the first problem I ran into while disassembling the cart. I had forgotten that I'd used a threaded insert to attach it to the cart, and I wish I hadn't done that, but it's not a catastrophe. I quickly realized that taking the top off was going to be more of a challenge than I first thought. But I have an idea. Where's my circular saw? I have an old Makita Worm Drive circular saw that is great for rough construction, cutting studs, and demo work. The last time I used it, it was in the garage in the house. I have to acknowledge that it's pretty rare that I instantly remember where I last left a tool that I don't use very often, but in the case of the Makita, it hasn't been that long since I was working in the garage with it, so I was lucky it came to mind where I left it. I'm going to make a bunch of cross cuts on this top just a little less than the depth of the material so I don't cut into the cabinet bases below. The difference between a worm drive and a regular circular saw is in the power of the tool. The worm drive barely slows down at all in speed while making these cuts, whereas a regular circular saw might be stalling out a little bit doing something like this. So the worm drive is a lot safer as a result, and it's also easier control, but also more expensive. The cabinet boxes making up the cart were literally just screwed together and placed on a piece of three quarter inch melamine to make the base with the casters bolted through both. Since the three quarter inch base piece of melamine only had holes drilled in it for the casters, it was going to be fine to use again with the new L-shaped units. I'm actually more interested in making this piece of material work than I am in it being exactly a specific dimension. So if the carts end up being a little different size, that's no big deal. I just want to make sure I use material that's still usable rather than throwing it away. So I just cut the bottom base piece for the first cart and flipped the cart upside down to install the casters. I did find it a bit of a challenge in a couple of places to find another spot to drill a hole since I was using old material. I can't be accused of wasting anything on this project. I decided to add another block to help tie the boxes together for some reason. This will come back to haunt us a little later. There's really no reason to get too carried away in attaching the boxes together. A few screws in a few appropriate areas is really all that's needed. I was debating whether or not I needed a fifth caster on the bottom, but I think four is going to work fine. I mentioned earlier my intention to mirror the last two boxes to the first cart, and by that I mean reverse the alignment of them so that the two carts are opposite of each other, and this is what provides the opportunity to save space as well as create different configurations with the carts. 
I pulled a new piece of white melamine out of the wood rack to make the tops for both carts. The circular saw I'm using is a Festool track saw and it's very good at making precise cuts. My intention is to have a hardwood border around the perimeter of the melamine top that overhangs the cart itself and gives us an edge all the way around the carts to clamp things to as needed. So the size of the top itself is not critical because I can adjust the perimeter hardwood edge to be whatever width that needs to be to give us the overhang we want. I had some poplar hardwood pieces that worked perfect for building out the edges of the carts. I varied the width of the cuts as necessary to have about an inch to an inch and a quarter overhang all the way around each cart. Dowels or biscuits would have worked fine to attach the poplar or I could actually have glued and screwed the pieces into the melamine top, but I have a Festool domino cutter that is by far the easiest and fastest way to get a good end result. So the process is to just work my way around the table, cut the domino slots, test fit the pieces, then glue and clamp them in place and let them dry. Ryan is now taking over to build 12 drawers to fill our open storage spaces in the cabinet boxes. This will help minimize sawdust from getting into the drawers and give us good clean storage for a lot of our tools and supplies. He's also getting the first chance to use the new carts as outfeed tables for our table saw. For many of our projects, when we build drawers, we use half inch melamine. If it's something we want to have a little more finished look, we will cover the drawer top edges with a heat activated pre-glued edge banding material but that's not necessary on our shop drawers. It takes a lot of parts to build 12 drawers. Ryan will make two passes over the saw blade to create a quarter inch slot for our drawer bottoms. If we were using half inch bottoms, we would switch to a dado blade. He's almost there and needs 12 quarter inch pieces for the drawer bottoms, and then he's ready to begin assembling. We use this large table saw sled a lot for cross-cutting pieces like this and keeping them square. There is nothing fancy now about putting the drawers together. After gluing the edges, Ryan uses a staple gun to shoot inch and a quarter staples in the edges aligned at the corners to hold them together. We square up the drawers and run a bead of glue around the bottoms before checking them for squareness one final time with tape measure and then letting them dry. We cut a 45 degree chamfer on the tops of the drawer sides just to take away any sharp edges. I have found that I have to just set aside a block of time and get in the right frame of mind to install drawer slides because it's going to take longer than I think it will and it's going to be more frustrating than I want it to be, particularly with 12 drawers to install. So I'm glad Ryan is doing this. If we did this all the time, I'm sure we would develop a set of jigs and methods to simplify the process, but even at that, installing drawer slides is really tedious. It seems like you have to get in all kinds of weird positions to spin in the screws and make minor adjustments continually in order to get things aligning just right. Sometimes when sliding a drawer into its slot, the slides can bind a little, which is usually solved by putting a little force behind pushing the drawer in. That normally will take care of it. Come on, last one. Ryan thought that this was what was happening here, but remember back earlier in the video I mentioned I added another block to help tie the two cabinet units together? Sorry about that, Ryan. It seemed like a good idea at the time. He wanted to build another drawer, but with a little glue and staples, I assured him it would be fine for a shop drawer. I'm sure he learned those words from friends. We are adding drawer fronts to our drawer boxes, and for that, we're cutting three quarter inch melamine pieces to size, once again, using the chamfer bit on our trim router to knock off the sharp edges. Lining the drawer front to the box is a trial and error process of centering the box on the front. Once you get the bottom drawer and the stack in place and the front aligned correctly, a neat trick is to use heavy duty double-sided tape to position the front on the drawers above. By using a 1 8 inch spacer, in our case, on top of the drawer bottom, Brian can align the next drawer front and press it in place against the tape, then carefully open the drawer and install screws to hold the front in place permanently. 
If everything works right, this saves a lot of time installing the fronts on the other drawer boxes. To finish off the cart, we are adding drawer pulls all the way around in all 12 drawers and taking some quarter inch melamine pieces to close off the open sides of the carts. That should keep the vast majority of sawdust from getting into drawers, which is a big improvement over our old 4x4 cart that we started with. I particularly enjoy projects like this where we are making something new out of something old and reusing material for a better purpose. I think this setup is going to be useful for creating some different configurations of top surface working spaces depending on what projects we may be working on. If we would free up some wall space, I would also like to be able to roll these against the wall or in a corner to have them completely out of the way if needed. The drawers are also a big plus for our shop. A project coming up soon will be a vise to be able to clamp to the edges of the carts as needed, so keep an eye out for that video. Great having you watch until the end. Remember, there's always something going on around Dobbs Workshop. Check back often and see what Ryan and I are up to.